Today's lesson, we're going to talk about right triangle uh, trigonometry. So what's the right triangle trigonometry? Well, if we have a right triangle and using hypotenuse, which is the longest of the links, and opposite is going to be opposite of the angle given and adjacent. Using these three sides, we should be able to find the value of sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. How do we do that? Sine theta is opposite over a hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And sometimes it's uh, uh, hard to remember, so I will show you two way of doing it. The one, the first method I'm going to show, the easier to remember this size, is using the the first letter. So this first letter, S C T. You know, S cursive. You write it this way, right? So you're going to get it from this two side that's the s cursive so it will be three over five once your s cursive is done that's the side that you're going to start to get the fraction so it'll be opposite over hypotenuse and cosine cursive that way so it'll be look like that will be adjacent over hypotenuse which is in this case four over five Tangent cursive is this. So it'll be opposite over adjacent. So that's how you can remember um, which side you're going to use in order to get um, sine, cosine, and tangent. Other way of doing it is Sokatoa. So Sokatoa means that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, either way, you should be able to memorize this. But throughout the, the class, this is the method I'm using it. Once you get that, and if you wanted to find rest of three, uh, trig functions, you just flip them, right? So when you flip it, cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Cotangent is opposite of tangent, so it will be adjacent over opposite. Another thing, another thing that you can, you need to memorize is this chart right here. So getting 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree, or pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 value of all 6. That's one way of doing it. Other way of doing it is memorizing that right triangle of those three. And that's what I usually do. I'm bad with the memorizing the number. So I either memorize the shape. So if we have pi over 6, look like this, which this is 30 degree right triangle. So 30 degree right triangle means this angle must be largest. So this is going to be larger number 2. Opposite is going to be 1. And this is going to be square root of 3. So we know this 30 degree, which is pi over 6, is going to be the uh, smallest angle of this 3 angle. So that's why smallest number 1 should be on the opposite. Um, what about pi over 4? Pi over 4, right triangle. Pi over 4 means this is going to be 45 degree. It means this should be 45 also. 
So this opposite and adjacent should be the same value and hypotenuse is square root of 2. And then pi over 3, which is the 60 degree right triangle, the hypotenuse should be always the largest value. And the smallest value will be here, which is 1, and this is going to be square root of 3. So if you're looking at pi over 6 first, pi over 3, you have all the same value. It's just the opposite and adjacent places rotated because this is the smallest the angle. If this is 60, this is 90, this have to be 30 degree, right? So opposite of the smallest angle should be always 1. So that's how we decide if 1 is going to be opposite or 1 is going to be adjacent. So if we remember this 3 triangle, then we should know what sine of pi over 2. That's 1 over 2. Cosine, square root of 3 over 2. Tangent, 1 over, uh, 1 over square root of 3. You will see that all here. So I decide to just memorize this shape instead of memorizing the charts. But it's up to you which way you want it to do. So 45 degree or pi over 4, sine should be 1 over square root of 3. Uh, cosine 1 over square root of 3. Tangent is 1 over 1. And same thing for pi over 3, right? Sine, cosine, tangent values. We also have cofunction identity. So if we wanted to... Um, We'll say sine theta is going to be equals to cosine 90 degree minus uh, the angle theta, right? It's going to be equals to each other. Same thing here. Cosine theta is going to be same as sine of 90 degree minus the theta. And so on tangents, uh, it's related to cotangents, secant is related to cosecants. So first example is see if we can find um, exact value of all six trig functions with the right triangle given. Um, if you wanted to use my method, you probably wanted to do the very first thing will be um, re uh, drawing your right triangle because the way that the method that my method work is your right triangle should be on the right corner, right bottom corner always, right? So instead of having a picture like that, I'm going to redraw that triangle and having the right angle on the right bottom corner. So this is going to be theta then, right? So opposite of the 90 degree, you have tens. Opposite of the theta, you have 6. And so adjacent should be 8. So using this, let me see. Your sign is going to be this. So it will be 6 over 10. And when you reduce it, you get 3 over 5. Cotangent will be 8 over 10. So it will be... 8 over 10 reduced will be 4 over 5. Tangent should be 6 over 8, which gives you 3 over 4. Once you have this three trig functions, then the other one should be just flipping it, right? So cosecant is going to be flip of sine. Secant is flip of cosine. And cotangent is flip of tangent. And that's how you're going to find your six trig function values. So if I show you exactly same thing one more time, first thing I will do is redrawing my triangle, having a uh, right angle on the right bottom corner. And that should be my angle. So that should be 3a, 
hypotenuse should be 3 square root of 5a and adjacent should be 6a then, right? Where your sign should be 3a over 3 square root of uh, 5a. So 3a over 3 square root of 5a. Simplify it or get rid of the common numerator versus denominator. You get 1 over square root of 5. You need to rationalize denominator. So you get square root of 5 over 5. And cosine should be this, will be 6a, will be the numerator, denominator 3 square root of 5a. When you reduce it, you get 2 over square root of 5, rationalize, that's what you get. Tangent should be this, so it will be 3a over 6a. which is one half. Let's flip uh, the other three. So it'll be, and let me flip before you rationalize it because um, once you flip, you don't, you no longer need to rationalize, right? So that'll be this number. So it'll be square root of five, that number, square root of five over two, flip that will be two. Example two is asking to find the co-functions. So we're going to use that formula. We've seen it before. Um, so it's saying if it's a sine, it's going to be the same as cosine 90 degree minus the given angle, right? So sine 72 degree is going to be co-function with cosine 18 degree. What about cosecant? Cosecant is related to secant, right? So secant 90 degree, uh, which is pi over 2 minus pi over 3. Have to have same denominator, so this is going to be same as 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6. So that gives you secant pi over 6. So cosecant pi over 3 is co-functions with secant pi over 6. What was a co-function with cotangent? It was tangent. So we do pi over 2 minus pi over 12 this time, right? So that gives you same denominator of 2 to become 12 will be multiply by 6, right? Gives you tangents of 5 pi over 12, right? This next example is repeating what, just, what we did in example 1, but we're adding one more information, one, one more uh, things that we need to do before we find the uh, trick functions. It say find the missing value first. So it look like you have only two sides given for right triangle. And we can use um, Pythagorean theorems to find this one missing values. So this one, uh, missing value is hypotenuse, which is the longest of the links. So how do we get hypotenuse C? Well, that will be square root of uh, A square plus B square. So let's do 5 square plus 12 square. So that gives you 25 plus 144. So that is square root of 169. That will be 13. So your measurement, your C, hypotenuse is going to be 13. Once we know that's 13, we have hypotenuse 13, opposite 5, um, adjacent 12, right? 
Using that, let's find all six trig functions. So that will be sine 5 over 13, cosine 12 over 13, tangent 5 over 12. Cosecant flip sine, secant flip cosine, cotangent flip tangent. What about if we have um, one value, one of the trig value is given and we need to find the remaining ones, right? So what do we do? Well, when it say tangent theta equals to four over seven from this, we should be able to find the uh, shape of the right triangle. So tangent, you read it like that. And tangent having four over seven, opposite should be four, adjacent should be seven. This is going to be just uh, finding one missing value in order to find all other trig functions, right? So you're looking for hypo I mean, um, yeah, hypotenuse, right? This this links right here. So that gives you adding square of adding those two values, which gives you forty nine plus sixteen. That's square root of sixty five. So if this is square root of sixty five, you should be able to get sine 4 over square root of 65. When you rationalize it, it should be 4 square root of 65 over 65. And sine is going to be 7 over square root of 65. Rationalize will be that. Tangent is given, so cotangent will be flipping off tangent, so it will be 7 over 4. And cosecant flip the sine, so it will be square root of 65 over 4. Secant will be square root of 65 over 7. If we try that one more time, B, cosine theta is square root of 10 over 10. Because these values are, oops, because this inside of value is same as this, pretty much we get this when you're trying to rationalize denominator. Look, rationalize denominator will make inside of the radical value become denominator value, right? Without the radical. So, Knowing that, this is going to be equals to 1 over square root of 10 if it wasn't rationalized, right? So that means right triangle of cosines will have 1 here and square root of 10 there. So what do we need to find out here? We need to find out the opposite value. So how do we find the opposite value? Opposite value will be square root of hypotenuse square, this time subtract, because it's not the longest link that you're looking for. Subtract the adjacent square. So this gives you square root of 10 minus 1, which is square root of 9. That will be 3. So opposite become 3. With all three sides now, we should be able to find the rest of trig functions. So sine will be 3 over square root of 10. When you rationalize that, it will be 3 square root of 10 over 10. Tangent is um, 3 over 1, which is 3. Let's start flipping. Um, cosecant is flipping 
sine before rationalize will be square root of 10 over 3. Cosecant, um, flip the cosine before rationalize it, so will be square root of 10. Cotangent, flip the tangent, will be 1 over 3. Example 5, we're assuming that angle, given angle, is acute angle. It means it's going to give you the triangle. And um, uh, if a cosine theta is given, they want you to find the cosecant theta. And, and from the previous example, we did finding with the 1 value given, we did finding all 5, other 5 values. So finding 1 will be the, the same as example 4, right? It's just that they're not asking all others. It's just asking for one more. So what do we do again? Um, draw the triangle. And this is theta, and let's say that's the 90 degree, right? And cosine is going to be square root of 21 over 7. In order to find other trig functions, you need to find the missing value first. So this is going to be opposite. You're going to do hypotenuse square minus adjacent square which gives you square root of 49 minus 21. That gives you square root of 28, which is two square root of seven. So once you have that, in order to find the cosecants, we need to know what sign is because you just flip the sign, right? So it'll be that. So we know that sine theta is going to be 2 square root of 7 over 7. So if we wanted to find cosecant theta, it will be 7 over uh, 2 square root of 7. And if we wanted to rationalize that, it will be 7 square root of 7 over 2 times 7 where you reduce it, it gives you square root of 7 over 2 for cosecant. As you can see, example 5 is no more, not, not any different than example 4. What about example 6? Um, it say find the exact value of each expression without using a calculator. So when I just looking at all these angles, right? It looked like we're looking at 45 degree, 30 degree, and 60 degree. The one that we memorized, the shape, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to memorize. I'm going to draw this uh, triangle to see if I memorized it. And by doing so, I will memorize it, right? So here is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, right? I draw my right triangle. And with that, I should be able to find all this value pretty quickly. Sine pi over 4. So that will be sine pi over 4. So it will be 1 over square root of 2 cotangent of pi over 3. Pi over 3, uh, cotangent is opposite of tangent. So this is tangent, which is square root of 3 over 1. So it will become 1 over square root of 3 for the cotangent ones, right? And when you do the multiplications, um, it will give you 1 over because it's 1 times 1. Square root of 2 times square root of two, uh, 3 is going to be square root of 6. You need to rationalize it, so it will be square root of 6 over 6 for that problem. Let's look at this. What's the 2 times? So 2 will be there. What's the cosine of pi over 6? Pi over 6 is here. Cosine is going to be square root of 3 over 2 minus 5 times sine pi over 3. 
sine pi over 3 will be square root of 3 over 2. And when you do the multiplication before you do subtraction, you get square root of 3 minus... You know what? Let's keep the same denominator. We don't want it to reduce yet because we need to do subtractions, right? So that's what you get. Once you have same denominator, you can do the subtractions on the numerator. So it will be same term of square root of 3. Square root of 3, you have 2 minus 5, so it will be negative 3. Square root of 3 is remaining. And that's the value of that problem. Again, tangent 60 degree. This is the 60 degree tangent is square root of 3 over 1 minus tangent 30 degree. Tangent 30 degree is 1 over square root of 3, right? And when you wanted to do the subtraction of fraction, have to have same denominator. So that gives you uh, multiply this by square root of 3, multiply that by square root of 3. So it will be 3 over square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3. Same denominator added, I mean uh, this is subtraction, subtract give you 2 over square root of 3. Let's rationalize your fractions. So you get 2 square root of 3 over 3 as the solution of the C. As you can see, if you remember these three shapes with the values, right? 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree. Other thing that you need to remember in order for you to not to memorize the charts with the value is... Let's see. Uh, 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree, and 360 degree. Or 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. This value, right? This is going to be 1 and 0. This is going to be 0 and 1. And this is going to be negative 1 and 0. This is going to be zero, uh, 0 and negative 1, right? That's another value you need to remember in order to find sine, cosine, tangents of pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi.